Welcome to today's yin class. Today we're doing a lot of hip opening, which I will talk about as we move into class as part of our moving into spring theme. So let's come to a seated position to begin. Any comfortable seat. You can have your legs extended. They don't have to be crossed. And just tap into your own body right now. And often when we're coming into yoga, there's some rushing or collecting things. So take a couple of minutes now to breathe. Drop in, feel your sits bones rooted in the mat. Notice any areas in the body that are feeling tight or sore today. And being, you know, true to that as we move through practice. And see now if you can line up your head over heart, heart over pelvis. Just notice if you tend to be leaning forward or backward. See if you can line that up, ears over shoulders. And then feel your spine lengthening, crown towards the sky. Nice long spine, energy rooted through the sits bones. Notice your breath, where it is landing in your body. We're going to do a round of breath work today called Veloma breath work. I'm somewhat new to it, but basically we're inhaling on a smooth inhale and then an interrupted exhale. So I'll show you what it looks like. We're going to do an inhale of one, two, three, four, hold at the top briefly, and then exhale in three sort of stutters through the nose, okay? So let's first take a cleansing breath. So inhale and exhale with me now. Inhale and exhale out the mouth, and now through the nose. Inhale, two, three, four, stutter out the nose, two, three. Inhale, two, three, four, stutter out the nose. Inhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. This time a slight pause after the inhale. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three. Exhale. Again, inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three. Last time, inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, Exhale. Just let go of that breath pattern and notice how you feel. You may feel somewhat energized, slightly more grounded. Whatever you notice, it's all fine. And then if you're sitting up on a cushion, just remove it for this next part. And if you've crossed your legs, take a change of the cross just to kind of, you know, balance out the hips here. And then hold your lower shins with your hands. We're going to do some more breath work here. And we're simply inhaling as our chest comes forward, exhaling back. We're going to just warm through the spine with breath here. This comes from Kundalini. So we're going to go a little faster than you may be used to. Inhale. Exhale through the nose. And of course you can take it at your own pace, but just try to keep it fairly rhythmic so that you stay with a pace. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Continue. Another few rounds. Stay with it. Inhale, 
exhale through the nose. And now move your hands to your knees and continue. When we move our hands to our knees, it brings the opening more between our shoulders. You may notice at first it was in the lower back, lower spine, and just moving our hands to our knees, we're bringing more opening in the upper back. A few more. And wherever you are, three more. Three, two, one. On the last one, inhale, hold in, draw on the pelvic floor, hold in, hold the breath. As imagine you're squeezing like a tube of toothpaste through your spine up to the upper centers of your brain and exhale and just notice how you feel after that close your eyes and tap in so that's a little bit of breath work from the kundalini world and when we do these exercises you can really feel the energy through your spine your body heats up fairly rapidly so just notice that kind of Soak it in like a sponge, enjoy it. Yeah, and now we'll sink into our yin poses. So we're gonna begin, our first yin pose is going to be butterfly. And we're going to take eagle arms with this pose. So bring the soles of the feet together and your blocks as an option under the thighs or knees. And I highly encourage you using your blocks. I'm also going to roll up the back of my mat just for a little height under my hips. So lifting up the hips helps angle the pelvis so it's a little more comfortable to sit. And then propping under the thighs so that we're not muscling in through the legs and we can allow the muscles to relax, get into those deeper yin tissues. Draw the right arm under the left here. Come into eagle arms. Breathe. First, draw the elbows away from the body and up. And just notice that space in, the, in between the shoulder blades. Breathe that here. And now when you're ready, begin to sink your body forward. You may want a prop under your elbows. If you have a bolster or pillow, you can just pull that in and use it as a prop to hold your arms and allow your head to soften down. Props under the arms, the head, again, allow us to really remove the muscular hold, the muscular tension so that we bypass that, the muscles and move into the deeper tissues. So here we are holding. Notice where we're feeling the tension. Breathe into those areas now. Lots of opening in the hips and in the upper back here. So this is very much a hip opening class, but I like to introduce some work in the upper body as well. And in spring, which is connected with the element of wood in traditional Chinese medicine, and in also associated with our liver and gallbladder organs, um, these hip opening classes help to shift us in a sense, when sometimes this time of year we feel a little stuck, right? We're kind of coming out of winter and we need to kind of shed off some things that we've been holding on to. And as we know, we tend to hold things in the hips and also in the shoulders. So opening into the hips, allowing some more smooth flow of chi through our body.
10, beginning to exit the pose. Inhale, and on your next exhale, begin to lift your head and your arms. Unwrap your arms. Just give them a little shake out. Come back to sitting for a moment. And then extend the legs further from your body. So we're coming into diamond now in the legs. The feet are further away from the groin. And then we wrap the left arm under the right this time. And same thing, find our way down to a block, a prop, left under the right. Yeah, swing left under right. We did right under left last time. If you did the other one, just switch. Just do the opposite. Come on down and now we're opening a little more into the outsides of the legs. When our feet are closer to the groin, the stress is more on the inner thighs. With the feet further away, we tend to work slightly more into the outer legs. So our liver meridian runs up through our inner legs and connects through some internal pathways and then all the way to our eye, our eyes. And the outside of our legs are, is connected to the gallbladder meridians. So we're tapping into both here. Another few cycles of breath, almost done here. Nice, juicy inhale, now flowing up all the way through the chest, the ribs, the low belly. Exhale, begin to lift your torso up slowly, slowly, maybe shake those arms out. And extend your legs long. Let's just notice what's going on in the body for a moment. Feeling the echo, the after effects through the spine, through the legs. Yeah, tap into that after sensation, that those after effects really the beauty of yin. And now we're going to move into fire log, which is not one of my favorite postures, and I'm going to give you some um, adaptations for it. For sure, it's helpful to sit up on some kind of small lift for this posture, and I'm going to do so with my mat. I'm just going to turn my mat around. <clears throat> So in fire log, um, or double pigeon, or square pose, we often see it with one leg stacked on top of the other. This is the, you know, the goal of the pose. Uh, we have legs are in line with one another, stacked on top. It's a big hip opening, and it's not particularly accessible for most of us. We can take this option with blocks, having blocks prop under maybe one or both knees, that's still quite inaccessible for me. So if that's the case, if you can stack your legs, go for it. Otherwise, just lift. We're gonna begin with the left leg on bottom, right leg on top. So if you can stack the right foot on top of the left knee, fine. Otherwise, just shift it right outside your left knee. So just in front of your left knee. So we're taking the shape, just modified. Okay, so for me, my right heel is right in front of my left knee, and we still have a, basically a square shape, okay? 
And even then, we can still take props if we need under one or both knees. And here, just begin to edge your way forward. So fingertips just starting to soften down, finding that first edge of tension here. And for me, it's not far. <laughs> so uh, adapt to your body. here. Yeah, that's better. And minding really that first edge of tension, right? I like to say we just kind of knock on the door of that tension. We don't kick down the door. It's really counterproductive to yin when the tissues are being pushed too much. And see what's happening with the mind right now as we're settling in. This is when the mind wants to chatter about how we don't like this pose. any other things that might be going on in your day, stay with your breath. Stay with the intention of breathing into the tension that you're feeling, right? I like that. The intention of breathing into the tension. That just came to me. <laughs> so if the tension is very largely in that right hip, breathe there as if you could draw breath into that area. Here, another few breaths. And I'm going to give you that relief now. Begin to walk your hands back slowly. Bring your hands behind your back. Extend knees up to the ceiling, feet on the floor. We're just going to windshield wash that out. Rinse out the hips here. And then taking it to the other side. So this time the right leg is on bottom, left is on top, or left is just in front of the right, okay? One side may be more open to you as well. And beginning to walk the fingertips forward, settling in to that first edge. Boy, my first edge is not very far, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> And I've been doing a lot of yoga the last week or so, and uh, so my hips are just feeling a bit tight. I've been doing more flow yoga, I'll say that, not yin, and that's why my hips are feeling more tight. But you know, I've trained myself that even when I'm doing these more young style classes to respect where I am with it. And so a lot of times when a guide instructor is doing downward dogs, chaturangas, I just don't. I modify and I do my thing. And it doesn't phase me anymore, right? There was a time when I might have felt like self-conscious about doing that in a group class. But now I know it's, it just feels better for me. So always honor where you are with it. smooth flow of chi through all the tissues in our hips and taking your last inhale hallelujah 
Yeah, we get to walk our way back out of that posture. Hands behind our bodies again, and another windshield wash, feet planted on the floor. I know, I know. Honestly, that is really one of my least favorite poses, and it, I'm finding a lot of instructors are doing it in class lately, so I feel like it's a message to me to <laughs> start to invite the pose into my practice more and open up those hips. All right, and now we're going to come to our straddle pose, dragonfly. So again, I'm up on a prop here, helps to lift the hips up and change the angle of the hips. And legs as wide as feels suitable for you today. And just notice yourself in this posture, in this pose before we even fold forward. Close your eyes, feel what's going on in the inner thighs. Lengthen through the crown. And now slowly begin to bring your fingertips forward and see where you land in this pose. If you want some support to fold down and relax through the spine, then bring some blocks or pillows for your head and then you can fold forward in the spine, allow the head to rest. And maybe turn the palms up as a reminder not to grip in this posture. So lots of opening through the inner thighs here, the liver meridian, also the kidney meridian. Feel the spine. 
And now with your legs out, we may move them in just an inch or two. Just bring them towards each other, just an inch or two. And rotate from the ankle, turning the toes down towards the floor as far as you can go, seeing how much range of motion you have. And then opening up, externally rotating, pinky toes towards the floor as far as you can go. Wow, I can really go very much further, like quite a bit on my right foot. Just notice what's going on in your body. And toes towards each other. And then opening out. See where your range of motion is in the ankle. Yeah, and one more time. Rotating ankles in and then out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and then walk the legs towards one another. Pedal out the knees. Move that energy through the knees, the legs. Nice. And we're coming down onto our backs. Yay. Having your blocks nearby, maybe your bolster. All right, coming down onto our backs. We're gonna begin with some lower back love. So draw your knees into your chest. Big exhale as you get there. Hug your knees and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. As you squeeze your knees to your chest, imagine lengthening your tailbone towards the mat. Yeah, imagine lengthening it down. Release the squeeze on your knees. And now just a gentle squeeze as you roll side to side on the low back, rolling knees left and right. Noticing what's going on in around the low back, in around the kidneys, adrenals, any tender areas. Find one, hold and breathe. And then a little pulse, drawing the knees towards the body, kind of massaging out on that spot. And then another little bit of exploration around the area. If there's another spot, hold. Take a breath or two and then pulse. And now lift your feet up towards the ceiling. Push your heels towards the ceiling, feeling lots of length in the hamstrings. And now draw the knees down towards the uh, um, underarms, the shoulders, and take the inside or outside of your feet for happy baby. Option to draw the feet towards the groin. So still like whole, you can bring the soles of the feet together and take the outside of the feet and bring them down towards your groin. And a few breaths here, again, imagining that tailbone coming down towards the mat. I'm not going to hold this for too long, just kind of working into the low back here. And maybe rocking side to side here with your happy baby, noticing how that feels on the low back. you're ready feet come back to the mat right foot crosses over the left knee 
coming into our figure four eye of the needle. And option to stay right here. I actually really like figure four just with one foot on the mat. It feels quite nice to me. Option to take this on the wall. If you prefer having that support of the wall, left foot on the wall, right foot crossed over the knee. And it gives some nice support without having to use your hands. And then third option is to lift the left foot off the floor and hold behind the left thigh. Okay, so find your happy place there today. I think we'll all be needing that Epsom salt bath later today. <laughs> After all of this hip opening, I don't know. What do you think guys? I think so. So I like to sometimes in this pose, just rotate that left ankle because the left leg is passive. It's not really doing anything. We don't need to flex through the foot. Uh, and I just kind of enjoy that motion of moving the left foot and also helps distract the mind somewhat from the hip. Just feeling out the sensations in the ankle. My ankle cracks quite a lot. <laughs> I notice it when I come down the stairs all the time. It's always cracking. <laughs> like, oh, that's a new spot. <laughs> There's a new one. Oh my. And we've got about another 30 seconds or so here. Imagining breath coming in through that right hip. And now, Begin to shift that right leg all the way down so that you're coming like into a cross-legged position with the hips, with the legs. So right knee crossed over the left and beginning to come into a twist. Now, if this is too much for a twist, you can uncross the legs. So coming into a cross-legged twist, beginning to bring the left foot down to meet the mat and then rolling down to the left. So if this is a lot on the hips, and it is, just uncross the legs and stack the knees, okay? Always, always an option. In fact, I'm going to take that one today because my hips are feeling a little sore. And then pressing into the right arm, lifting that left shoulder off the mat and replanting. And then perhaps keeping the gaze neutral at the sky or looking out over the right arm, or looking out over the left arm. It's your choice, guys. Yogi's choice, it's your practice. So really, you get to choose. A little more chest opening, you can bring the arms into cactus, or you can start to draw them up towards the head kind of navigate where you might want your arms to land. Hmm. And then sink into this beautiful twist. A twist a day. Also notice in your twist, it's very common for me, for my bottom leg to want to muscle into the twist and hold things. And if that's happening with you, then you might want some support under the bottom leg. of your breath into the low belly here. 
Notice the low belly rise and fall. Twists also so suited for this time of year as we want to kind of move into some new and fresh things, right? So we think of bringing out the old wash, sort of a wash of the things that we want to let go of. And now filling up with breath. Inhale, feel the breath in the low belly, the back body. And as you exhale, begin to tuck the right foot first behind to catch the mat. So lifting that right foot up and behind the left knee. And then beginning to roll back onto the mat with the right foot as support and then lifting the left knee and then pressing both feet into the mat, lift and replant the hips. And notice, notice what's going on. Notice the hum of energy maybe around that right side of the hip. And then we take it to the other side. So lifting the left foot up and over the right knee. Again, foot can stay on the mat, right foot can stay on the mat, right foot can be on the floor. Or lifting that right foot up, taking a hold behind the right thigh. and holding here. You may also just want to shift slightly left and right and kind of find that optimal spot there. I notice as I shift left, there's not as much sensation as when I just take a degree or two over to the right. I'm like, wow, I can feel some stuff in my knee and my hip. So I'm gonna hang out here. As long as it's, you know, stuff that's not Pain. <laughs> just increase sensation, right? Discomfort. And then we can maybe, if we want, roll around that right ankle. Say hello to that ankle. She's almost 13 now and um, she can sit and like turn to one side and then the other twisting and get that you know when you go to the chiropractor and get an adjustment and you hear all that crack sound which I quite enjoy she can just do that so easily turning left and right there's all these J -j 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 up her spine <laughs> I'm like wow that's a supple spine right there let me tell you it moves so freely but thankfully we have yin to support us now and we're going to shift now into the second phase of this posture so sliding that right left leg down the right coming sort of to a cross-legged lowering the right foot to the mat pressing into the right foot just lifting the hips up slightly and over to the left and drawing the knees down to the right. Again, uncrossing the knees is always an option. And then finding our place with our upper body, maybe pushing into the right left arm, sorry, the left arm. There's either one or the other. <laughs> and replanting. And then sinking in here. So for me, I can cross my leg on this side very easily, whereas the other side, it was very uncomfortable. So 
Perhaps you have more range of motion on one side or the other, and that's fine. Always take that version that suits you today in this moment. But yes, the suppleness of our spine, right? There's a quote that goes, um, we are only as old, no, sorry, we are only as young as our spine is flexible. And I remember reading that and thinking, whoa, that's a big quote. <laughs> but when you think about the health of our spine and how it affects all of our mobility, well, yin will help us with that through aging, of course, right? It helps those tissues to be supple. It helps with the uh, synovial fluid between the joints. It helps build hyaluronic acid in the joints in the body. So what we're doing for our, our tissues through yin helps keep them young. Maybe not 13 year old young, but young. Feeling the breath in the low left belly now. Last few rounds of breath here. And now inhale, fill up. Feel lots of expansion with that breath and then lift that left foot up and tuck the left foot in behind the right leg, foot comes to the mat first, begin to roll back onto that left foot, lifting the right knee up, feet plant, resituate the hips, notice, notice. Nice. Okay, our next posture, I recommend a bolster and blocks. So we're going to take supported uh, fish with butterfly legs. So I'm using the bolster behind my back body. You could use the, bo the blocks for supported fish as well, but this is quite supportive and, and lovely. So bringing the bolster right up behind the low back, rolling on down the bolster. If you want a little prop for your head or your neck, you can roll a blanket under your neck for just a little bit of a pillow or something under your head. And then I'm coming into butterfly, but I'm using the blocks for my legs. I can take butterfly without them, but I'm not going to because I really want the legs to be supported here. And again, allow all those tissues in the hips to open and receive the benefits of yin. And then the arms can be out at shoulder height in a T or again in cactus. And that will bring more opening in through the armpit, in through the shoulders, the biceps. And we begin to bliss out here in this supported chest opener, hip opener, everything is opening here. As we're opening in those areas, in the hips, you can imagine the color orange in around the low belly, the sacral chakra, Svadhisthana, as it's called in Sanskrit. And imagine that orange color spilling out into the hips, 
expanding through the low belly and also opening through the heart here Anahata. Imagine the color green or the color pink if that comes to you more readily for the heart chakra. Imagine that green color spilling out through the limbs, through the arms. And sink in now to your own sweet space here. I'm going to be here for a few minutes. Beginning to exit, first taking a full inhale, feeling where that breath is going in your body, seeing if you can take in a sip more, and then exhale. And let's move really slowly out of this posture with our eyes closed. So drawing your arms down towards your body, taking the outsides of your legs and beginning to lift your knees together. Feet plant on the floor. Stay with your internal world here. And then rolling off to one side to shift that bolster away from your body and coming back down to your back body on the mat. Feet planted on the mat, bring your arms down by your side and just notice your spine on the mat after that chest opener. Observe any 
sort of settling of energy that's going on there. Now we're gonna take a short round of somatic movement before we move into Shavasana. So bring your arms out at a T with your palms facing down. Bring your feet a little wider, just about as wide as the mat, or maybe not, not, a, not quite too wide, but just, you know, a comfortable distance, not together. And then begin to lower the knees down to the left, really slowly. And inhale as they come back up to the top. Use your arms for support here. And now the knees come down to the right, rolling on to the right edges of the feet. And back up to the top on your inhale. Exhale, knees down to the right, left, sorry, down to the left, rolling onto the left edges of your feet. And this time, allow your head to come over to the right, rolling to the right. Inhale, slowly rolling the feet back to the mat, head center, knees to the ceiling. Exhale, begin to look down to the left, rolling feet, knees down to the right. And again, inhaling through center, hearing your head roll on the mat. Exhale, rolling head to the right, knees down to the left. Your center on your inhale, hearing your head roll back to center. One more time on the inch side, rolling knees down to the right, onto the edges of the feet. Gaze looks to the left. Inhale, rolling through center, and exhale, knees down to the left, gaze to the right. And then coming back through center. Just feeling that out and noticing. Mm, nice. And now extend one leg long, then the other, taking up lots of space on your Legs wide, arms come down by your sides. Open your palms up to the sky. Nice, inhale and exhale, breathe it out, let it go. Bring your awareness to all spots where your body's meeting the floor, meeting the mat, the backs of your heels, your calves, backs of the hips, shoulders, backs of the arms and hands and the skull and I'm feeling all those points deepen, heavy, become heavier and heavier on the floor. And remembering that Shavasana is like digesting after our meal of so allow your body to digest and incorporate everything that we've done. Soften around the face, the eyes, allow the teeth to part. Quiet mind, quiet body now, Shavasana.
some space there. And just noticing before you move how you feel right here, right now. And taking a moment of gratitude for yourself for coming to practice. creating this space for yourself right now. And then beginning to make some small movements, wiggling the toes, the fingers, moving around the head, slowly left to right, deepening the breath as you move. deeper breaths, maybe letting out a sigh. And if it feels good, reaching those arms overhead, interlacing the fingers, turning the hands inside out, and taking a really big body stretch, pointing the toes and hands away from each other. And as you exhale, rolling off onto your left side in fetal position head rested on your left bicep, giving the body a moment to resituate here. And then the hardest part of class, <laughs> pushing up into a seated position from there in a comfortable seat, just to close out class here together. Maybe still moving with your eyes closed, coming to a long spine, again aligning head over heart, heart over pelvis. Bringing your hands into Anjali Mudra, prayer at your heart space, thumbs muzzle against your sternum here. Just take a deep inhale and exhale together, inhaling and letting it go through the mouth. Lovely, bringing a smile to your face. Wishing you all a beautiful day today, everyone. Thank you, wonderful job. Thank you for coming together in community here and allowing me to lead you today. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. And encourage a really nice Epsom bath.